Hello, I'm Gary Beach, publisher emeritus for CIO Magazine and an advisory board member of the Enterprise CIO Forum. Joining me today is Tom Davenport, one of the world's most renowned consultants on all things data, is a visiting professor at Harvard Business School for this academic year and also maintains his position as professor of management and information technology at Babson College in Wellesley. Tom, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Gary. Happy to be here. Tom, we're hearing more and more these days about this term predictive analytics. I did some search on the search engines this morning. One came back with 4,300,000, the other one came back with 5,200,000. I have no idea what that means, but I know you, as an expert in this field, do know what predictive analytics mean. Describe it, please, and put it in the context of what viewers might think of as traditional conventional analytics. Sure, so um, Gary, I typically define three categories of analytics. Um, the conventional category, we, we used to call it reporting. Uh, most of business intelligence fell into that category. It was kind of standard reports or queries or scorecards or dashboards or whatever, but all on past data mm -hmm. and no um, idea about why it happened, no underlying model to explain it. Um, Predictive analytics says, okay, first you have to come up with a good model to describe that data of the past, typically a statistical model, and then once you have a well-fitting model, a model that fits that past data, you say, okay, let's extend it into the future. Let's assume that the future is going to be like the past, as it is in, in most cases, but not all, and we can start to make predictions about what customers will do and how people res will respond to ads and, and so on. The third category I'll call prescriptive analytics, which are analytics that tell you what to do. So it might be an optimization, a randomized testing or design of experiments approach, simulation that says, okay, we tried several things and they suggest that this one is better, so you do that thing. Or we found the optimum price, so you charge that price. So those, I think, are the three types. Obviously, most of the activity is still in the descriptive category. Of, the, of those three. And how, how would you describe predictive analytics, how is it related to the other term we're hearing a lot about these days, big data? Well, you can do um, predictive analytics on big data or small data. Um, uh, the, t you know, ironically, um, there is this phenomenon with big data of using relatively small math um, and even though um, you know we use massive amounts of data in big data environments, typically petabytes people are using, often in quite unstructured data of a lot of different uh, sources and, and types, um, the actual analytics that people do on big data are usually not that sophisticated. You know, a lot of visual analytics, which is a form of, of descriptive from uh, video analytics. or, or no, not? not so much video, but just really nice graphs and charts. Okay. They might move a little bit in the more advanced forms, but the, the problem is people spend so much time and energy um, munging the data, you know, getting it in a form that it can be categorized and counted and, and, and in a structured format that they often don't have a lot of energy left over for the predictive and the prescriptive analytics. Just, you know, counting it and giving pictures on it is, is the only thing they do. You know, talking about what they do uh, with this in terms of what advice, as you well know, every year IDC is saying that now it's over two zettabytes with 21 zeros of data. How do viewers, how do they get, get their shops in shape, their careers in shape to handle this era of predictive analytics? What do they got to do? Well, you know, I think it's got to be driven by the business need, uh, as in most cases with IT phenomena. And so, um, I talk about, you know, what's your primary target for your analytical activity? Um, uh, what's really going to make a difference in your business? You can sort of broaden out from that, but you need some initial focus. So you have a company like Google, they started out with page rank algorithms, that was the core of their business, and then they broadened it out to advertising algorithms, and then now almost everything they do is analytical, venture capital and HR and all these sorts of things, but initially they had a core. Same with, you know, Harrah's, starting with loyalty analytics and kind of broadening it out to other areas. But you need to decide what's really critical to your business, and that's where you should focus your analytical energy. So it's energies. a business is the head of the train. 
Yeah, I mean, certainly, Gary, there are some circumstances. You have a big pile of data. You might say, let's look around in there and see what opportunities there are. But for the most part, it's what do we need to accomplish and how can the data and the analytics support it?